Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is your boy, yours truly, the one and only, Darren Gordon, a.k.a. D. G, baby, mask on, mask on. I'm back. I know it's probably been about a week and a half. Ah, but I'm excited to be making this video. I'm excited for every video that I make, but I feel like, you know, I've been getting a lot of subscribers the past couple of days. So thank you all, you know, welcome new subscribers and returning subscribers as well back to the channel. I really appreciate you guys. You know, thank you all for the support uh, and helping my channel grow. And, you know, as you can see from the title of this video, um, I, the reason why I'm talking about this is because you know, over the past past couple months, actually, I've been getting um, asked, you know, how I was able to, you know, overcome, you know, what I went through and some of the things that I went through while uh, being in the closet and struggles and things like that. And, you know, I just want to share with you guys um, my story, you know, and, you know, some of the things that I went through, you know, while being in the closet. You know, because, you know, you guys know who I am by now. You know, I'm all about helping people. Um, you know, that's one of the things I enjoy doing. I love helping people, um, inspiring people, you know, to, you know, be your true authentic self. So um, that's what I love about this channel. And I'm going to continue to keep making videos for you guys because you guys are loving this. So, yes, thank you all for the support. And before we get started, don't forget to please leave a like on the video and comment down below um and whatever you guys want me to talk about next without further ado let's get in to it so um for me it's almost like where to begin but you know i think i gotta take it back to you know when i was living in new jersey playing for new jersey you know jersey people stand up that's where i was born and raised playing field new jersey and one of the things, you know, I would say, you know, I'm going to talk, talk about a couple of things, but one of the things that, you know, I struggle with with being in the closet, um, I think we all have been through this, is honestly finding people to talk to, um, especially when you, I think even regardless, you know, I was young, you know, I was in my, what, 16, 17, 16, 17, 18 years old, um, but I don't think age really matters. You right over there? You're breathing a little heavy, huh? <laughs> this is crazy. Sorry about that. I know. I know. I'm going to take you for a walk after this video. Take you for a walk. Um, but, yeah, one of the things that I struggle with um, is, yeah, finding somebody to talk to. You know, and I think that regardless of age, especially when you're in a closet and you're struggling, you know, you're... It's not easy to just to talk talk to people about, you know, your current situation and, you know, your sexuality, you know, especially when you're in a closet. So I think for me, that was one of the hardest things um, of dealing with the day to day life, being around, you know, a lot of straight people. And, you know, I'm talking about girls and this and that and, you know, chiming in. <laughs> <laughs> on, on topics that you like in the sense you don't really want to talk about but you know since you're around those group of guys for instance when I was in college when I played college ball um, at Western Kentucky which I you know I had a girlfriend at the time too um, and UMass Amherst I think we all know people who you know play um, sports um, how it is in the locker room you know people talking about girls and this and that and and in a sense you feel so left out because it's like you don't want to talk about that but in a sense you feel that you have to add some type of input so that you know they don't um think or assume like you know that you are gay because you're not adding any input or you know so for me personally it was always like yeah i'm, I'm gonna take i'm gonna take it back to that when i was in college yeah, bro. Like, yeah, that girl, yeah, she she fine. <laughs> yeah, she's hot. She's hot. Um, oh my gosh. <laughs> it brings back so many memories memories because that's how it was, honestly. Um, and I struggle with that so much because it's like, oh my gosh, I really don't feel like talking about this. 
Um, only if there were, you know, that one more person in the locker room, or not even the locker room, wherever you are, you know, one that one person that you could talk to about, oh my gosh, yeah, this guy's hot, that guy's hot, or whatever it may be. So I struggle with that a lot. Like that was something that, yeah, I couldn't talk to anybody about. The only how I was able, honestly, I say how, how I was able to cope with that was I remember that's when I was introduced to Grinder. Um, and you guys all know how that story went with my father catch me. If you don't, go back and check that video out. Um, my father caught me on Grinder, But, you know, and I got on a couple different at, um, gay apps as well. Um, but it was always good just to talk to people. Even if you weren't necessarily you know, fooling around with these people. It was always good just to, you know, yeah, talk to these people. So for me personally, that helped me because I was talking to somebody of my kind, you know, somebody who, you know, yeah, someone who, someone else who's gay, you know? And I think that's why, you know, shout out to Asbury Park um, in New Jersey, um, Club Paradise, that is my stomping grounds. That's where it all started for your boy, Club Paradise, down in Asbury Park. And they all knew that I played college basketball, and they didn't say a word. Um, and I love and respect them for that. Um, and I always will. And every time I, you know, I go back to New, New Jersey, I always try to go up there. But you know, I know the owners and everything, and it's like it's. Club Paradise will always have a place in my heart, you know, always, always, always. Um, so that's one of the things. The second thing, where I live, where I used to live, per se. Um, Plainfield, I'm not going to say it's like, I'm not going to say that it's uh, like super dangerous or whatever. But I think in general, wherever you go, wherever city you're in, there's, oh, you're always going to have that bad part of town. I think wherever you are, regardless of, you know, it doesn't matter what city you're in. Um, there's always that bad section. Um, so for me, how the people who I grew up around, you know, 99%, you know, all black, masculine, straight acting, thuggish, per se, not in a bad way. Um, but, yeah, growing up around people like that, I struggle with... Because if, look, look at it this way. If I never would have came out, never would have came out ever, like publicly, I could walk down the street and no one would ever think, you know, that I'm gay. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with being flamboyant because... Like, if that's who you are, that's who you are. I have plenty of friends, close friends, actually, who are that way, you know? So there's nothing wrong with that, you know? Be yourself. If that's what you want to, that's who you want to be, be that, you know? It doesn't matter, you know? At the end of the day, I look at it. LGBTQ, we're all one big happy family at the end of the day. That's how I personally look at it, so. Um, but I struggle with, like, how, how am I going to, like, there's no way that I can be from playing field and the people I'm hanging around and be gay. Um, and, I, and that's one of the things I struggle with because I was like, there's no, maybe I'm bi or maybe this is just a phase that I'm going through because it's like, look at the people who I'm hanging around in my family. Like, there's no way that I can be gay. And I struggle. <laughs> yeah, that was, oh man, middle school, high school. I struggled with that a lot. A lot. It, it was it was tough. It was it was very tough actually. Um, but yeah, and that, and that just goes to show when you really look at it, like it's twenty twenty now. There are so many people who are still in the closet that you would never think that they are gay because they're you know they're so deep in the closet that yeah there there's no way they're coming out. But it's like, yeah, you can't tell. That's why it, does, it doesn't surprise me. Like, it wouldn't surprise me if, like, tons of people came out in professional sports right now. It wouldn't surprise me. Like, it's 2020. Like, come on. Are we... The fact... <laughs> and I, I'm going to say this again because I said this in my past video. 
the fact that this is even still a topic of discussion, even though it's 2020, is just crazy to me. It's, it's honestly crazy that we even are still having this these discussions. But you know what? At the end of the day, I don't mind. Like I consider myself to be, be one of the trailblazers for our community. So, and I'm going to continue to keep doing that. So I don't mind, you know, sharing my input and giving my input to help people get through what they're getting through and, you know, helping people in the sense of, okay, well, this is what I went through. So they, you guys are probably going through similar situations. So this is how you can handle it and things like that. Um, so those are two things, um, that I struggle with. I mean, there's, there's so much, um, but I, I, I taught, the reason why I mentioned those two things, because those were honestly the main two things that I struggle with. Um, because I get asked all the time, honestly, like how was I able to, you know, talk to my family and, you know, especially being from certain, you know, from the area and the community where I live at, like, it's just like, I didn't look at it like that. Like I, I looked at it as like this, like it doesn't matter where you live at, to be honest, you have to, you have to be comfortable in your own skin. Meaning, meaning when I say this, and, and this goes to people by all means who are living, I mean, all around the world, of course, but you know, those states like Mississippi, Kentucky, like Kentucky's some areas is okay, but like Mississippi and Alabama is, yeah. Um, I, I can't even imagine, but always stay true to yourself. Um, I didn't want to be that guy, honestly, um, 30, 40, 50 years old. Um, and then all of a sudden I come out, like, I didn't want to be that person. I honestly, I couldn't live that way. Like I was already going out to clubbing to parties and stuff like that. Like, because when you look at it, it's it, when you really, really look at it, it's like you're not being true to yourself based off of because of what society says. And it's like, excuse my language, I will be damned if I let society dictate how I choose to live my life and love who I want to love. No. Are you kidding me? No, it's not happening. It's definitely not happening with me. Um, and I don't want it to happen with you. But don't get me wrong. This is not me saying, going, yeah, come out, come out, come No. Because um, I gave advice to a guy the other day that I said, listen, you have to be comfortable to the point where even if your family tries to disown you, you're still going to be happy. And that's how, that's the point that I had to get to. Even if my mom, my dad, my two brothers, even if they try to, you know, in a sense, you know, disown me in any type of way, I, I would have been disappointed and probably sad a little bit, but I would have been happy. You know, and if you're not 100% confident in yourself at that point, then yeah, I advise you not to come out yet. You know, do it when you're ready when you're absolutely ready to the point where you're not going to care what anybody else thinks and you also have to know you're going to be loved like you may lose some friends that in a way that's a given because you honestly you really see who your true friends really are and they weren't your friends from the get-go but trust me over on this side the lgbt side trust me you're going to be loved you 100 percent going to be loved i've you know, had so much support behind me when I came out. Um, you know, I, I lost some friends, but I gained many. Um, and so much respect as well, you know. So always remember that. Always remember that. It's 2020, you know, be yourself, live your true, authentic life. If you want to be, you know, gay, trans, bi, you know, masculine, flamboyant, whatever, 
jump through hula hoops, I don't care. Do it, live life, be you. Do exactly what you love and enjoy it and do it. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Stay true to yourself. This is your boy. I hope I didn't talk your ear off. <laughs> but I, I felt that I, I needed to make this video. I love inspiring you guys and I, I know you guys love my videos. So I you know, wanna thank you guys so much for all the support. And just like I said earlier in the beginning of the video, um, in the comment section, write down what, like, exactly write down what you guys want me to talk about. Because I'm, I'm an open book. Um, so whatever you guys want me to specifically talk about, leave in the comment section below, and then we'll go from there. Um, but if you're new to the channel, you already know what to do. Hit that subscribe button down below and turn on those post notifications. Hope you guys have a great weekend. And also... Remember to keep washing your hands. You know that coronavirus is going around. Wash your hands. Don't touch your nose, your eyes, your mouth, none of that. Make sure your hands are clean. Have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Thank you guys so much for all the support, and I will see you guys soon. This is yours truly, the one and only, Derek Gordon, a.k.a. D.G. Mask on. Love you guys. Talk to you guys soon.